that. We sing together, and then we have the opportunity to fellowship together after the service in our fellowship hall. If you're a guest with us today, we're so glad that you're with us. You're looking for a church home. We pray that uh, the Lord will lead you to that place where you feel like you're part of a family of faith. And certainly, we hope that Emmanuel would fit that for you. If you'd like more information about Emmanuel, stop by guest services on the way out. Uh, we have a gift bag for you with some more information. We'd love to visit with you, get to know you a little better. And uh, members and guests alike, there's a card in the back of the queue. Uh, if you'd be willing to fill that out, pass it to your right when finished. This helps us with our pastoral care. So we gather together today. We uh, do some brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Why don't we sing and greet those who are working with us today? We may see. We're opening in.
I invite you to be seated as we turn our attention now to the reading of God's word from Genesis 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed, and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seas of finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf, gave it to the servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah, they asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Colossians. It is our sermon text for today as we follow our uh, theme through the summer, uh, reading through the book of Colossians. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to honor the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it would not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Lord I invite you to be seated. I invite children forward for a children's message. A couple of announcements as kids may or may not come forward. Um, We have the swim party July uh, 29th, it's coming Friday, at uh, Hoyt Park. Uh, We saw an announcement before the service. There's uh, tickets at guest services if you'd like to go. It's a a free event for our Manion family. If you look at page 7 of the bulletin, uh, there's a registration for the Emanuel Golf Outing, the second annual. It's in September, and we would invite you to uh, consider getting a group together to uh, golf at that. And on the back page, we continue to look for the uh, uh, addresses of those who um, are our young adults and going off to college especially. Uh, so that we can continue contact with them. Also, I I know that the uh, word is out, uh, but so I have a decision about the call. Um, On June 5th, our Redeemer extended me the call uh, to be their senior pastor, and it's taken taken quite a while to arrive at a decision. And the reason it's taken quite a while is uh, there is such a, a blessing uh, to being a pastor here, and uh, the friendships that started long ago that were able to continue while being here, friendships that have started. Uh, but when it comes down to it, um, I had to discern where I am in ministry, and I feel prepared and ready uh, to take on that role of stewarding a ministry environment, the role of stewarding a staff, uh, particularly in that seat of a senior pastor. 
And so I have accepted the call uh, to go to our Redeemer and to be their senior pastor. Uh, next weekend, uh, as our preaching schedule uh, kind of goes throughout the summer, uh, I anticipate being the last weekend I preach uh, so that I can be on staff in time for the faculty when they return for the school year and to begin encouraging and, and uh, being that brother in Christ that uh, a faculty needs from a senior pastor, uh, I would hope to begin on August 1st so that I can be there as staff uh, reports back to the school year. It, again, not an easy decision at all. Um, if it was based purely on the merit of the relationships, um, there would be no doubt, no doubt that uh, our heart belongs here. Um, but in terms of ministry and where I'm, uh, where I'm at, I've had to take that, uh, take that step. And uh, I do so with uh, some humble trepidation, never having had that role uh, before. So my family and I would uh, appreciate your prayers. Uh, if you'd like any more conversation about that decision, I'm uh, more than happy to, to grab coffee with you. Uh, the Lord be with you and uh, the leadership as you now uh, set your sight on your future together as a congregation and what leadership looks like here. Children's message. Um, there's this uh, phrase that we just heard and um, it said that in Jesus' death, we're hidden in him and in his resurrection. And so for the next two weeks, we're going to talk about this idea of being hidden in Christ. Um, i got a couple of shirts here. So right now, and especially after we beat the Cubs, if I'm wearing a shirt like this, what does it say about me? Anybody know what shirt this is? What, what team is this? Yeah, it's Milwaukee Brewer shirt, yeah. And so if I went to uh, Miller Park with that shirt on, I would have uh, thousands of, of best friends, right? And I'd kind, of, I'd kind of blend in with the crowd. All the people, and I guess the Cubs would bring a lot of uh, people up. Not a good example for this weekend. But uh, by and large, if I wear this shirt to Miller Park, I'm going to be among a lot of friends, right? Maybe this one makes a little more sense to you. In the fall, we wear this shirt. What team is this? Yeah, yeah, you said it, Green Bay Packers. And as we walk around in Wisconsin, when I wear this shirt, I'm with a ton of friends, right? I'm kind of kidding. Um, this one you won't know. Uh, this is the shirt of the school I was at down in Texas. This is one of my coaching shirts. And we were the Crusaders, so we had Sander Pride. And on a Friday night, when we all wore the uh, Navy and uh, the Crusader, kind of blended in with everybody. So we're going to talk today about being hidden, kind of in plain sight. When we wear a shirt like that with a bunch of other people, we're kind of hidden. Now if I wore a Green Bay Packers shirt, uh, say to uh, Soldier Field in Chicago, would I stand out? I, I would stand out. That's next weekend's message, okay? That's next weekend's message. This weekend's message is about us looking very much alike in Christ Jesus. Um, so let me ask you another question. It's sort of unrelated, sort of related. Uh, there were some thunderstorms this past week. Okay? You might be a little too old for this, uh, but some of you are not. Um, when there is a loud thunder boom in the middle of the night, uh, what, do, what do kids especially sometimes do? What do you do, baby? Big thunderbolt wakes you up. You're scared. What do you do? Yeah. What do you think they would do? Um, they would probably shoot out that it was thunder, then they would stop being worried because they're protected and they're Okay. So maybe, uh, maybe they'd wake up and think through it and say, well, I'm really protected. You know what? Sometimes we operate with a little more instinct than that. What's kind of our instinct when we're scared and we're little? What do we do? Yeah. You might run to your mom and dad's bed and cuddle up underneath and get into their arms, right? That is the picture of being hidden with Christ. Whether we wear Jesus and we're among our family of faith here and we kind of blend in as people, or when we're scared, we're able to come and, and come under. And how do mom and dad do? What do we do? We hide under their arms, right? And they put their arms around us and they bring us.
understand? And I want you to know that that's what your Savior does for you. When we think about sin and death, those are terrifying things. You know what Jesus did when he rose? He essentially put his arms around us and he hides us away from sin and death. He also allows us to wear him before our world. And when we sit together, uh, together, we, uh, we reflect this Jesus. But then next week we'll talk about going out into a world and sort of being out on that, that edge. But this week is about a Savior who nestles us in, kind of like a hen gathers her chicks under her feathers. The activity I have for you is for you to design your own shirt. My life is hidden in Christ. What would the shirt, well abstract, might have to have mom and help it. What would the shirt look like that shows that Jesus has his arms wrapped around you? So have some fun designing that. I have some markers, I'll grab those in a second. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you, thank you for hiding us, for hiding us under, your under your strong arm. Amen. All right, you can grab a coloring sheet. I'll give you those markers. Bring them over.
on your part, no good works on your end, nothing. God, in his love for you, raised you from the dead. And so since we've been raised with Christ, last week was being dead in our trespasses, this week starts the ball rolling on being raised with Christ Jesus. Now we have the opportunity to set our minds on those things that center and focus on our Redeemer. Sorry. <laughs> that wasn't an intentional phrase. My Redeemer lives. He does. That was the message on Easter Sunday. My Redeemer lives. And here's the graphic. It makes a lot of sense. The first thing we talked about on Easter Sunday is that Jesus Christ is mine. He's a personal Savior. The second thing we talked about is that he redeemed me. He redeemed you from sin and death. Just like we talked about with the kids. He sheltered you under his arms. How did he do that? When he stretched them out on a cross so you would not have to experience the pain of eternal death and damnation at the Father's hands. And he lives. He left that tomb empty. So that's the Easter message, and that's the graphic, Jesus, the cross, and the empty grave. And I think it's relevant for us today as we look at Colossians 3, 1 through 4, it tells the story. In Christ Jesus, you have been raised to new life. And what does this mean? It means that you are hidden in Christ Jesus. Now here's what I want you to do with the Easter graphic. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the tomb on the one side and Jesus on the other. And there's two types of hiddenness that Colossians is talking about. Now, the empty tomb is an icon of Easter Sunday. But let's imagine that that tomb is not an icon of Easter Sunday. Let's imagine that it is the place that all of us will end up in, which we will in one way, shape, or form, correct? And prior to chapter 3, Paul is talking about you can be hidden in one of two ways. You can be hidden with Christ, or you can be hidden with the spirits and elemental things of this world. In other words, let's think about that tomb as a daily reality. Let's think about that tomb as the way a lot of people live. They are hidden in this world. Does that make sense? Just as a body, when it's put in the tomb, is hidden with the ground, you cannot see the body. It is part of the earth from dust to dust and ashes to ashes. People live that way daily. They live daily entombed in sin and death on the one side. Paul, up to this point, has been talking about that way of life. And those who live entombed in this world haven't any hope and are in uh, incapable of producing the joy and the perseverance that is necessary to face the challenges of this life. On the other side of the equation is Jesus Christ. Paul says, you have been hidden in Christ Jesus. As I've done in the past, and why not do it again? The Greek word for hidden is kekruptai. Now, if you studied Greek, you would know that that is a perfect indicative active of kruptai, or uh, krupomai, which means, in that verb form, that something has happened in the past, a completed action, it's done, but the effect of what has been accomplished continues through all history. In other words, when you were baptized, God K. Kruptide you in Jesus Christ. He accomplished you being hidden in Christ Jesus, and this is a reality that continues throughout your lifetime until you are fully before the Lord's throne in glory, risen in new life. And that hiddenness should give you hope and encouragement today. Because you have a Savior who faced sin and death in the eye and willingly took on his shoulders the sin of mankind, the cross. He took on everything that you could bring up that you would believe to suggest that you have no place in the kingdom of heaven. 
You can go back through your life and think about your most major mistakes and believe that somehow God would prevent you from his kingdom because of them. Perhaps you might think of those things that are recurring issues in your life and think that those are the things that would prevent you from living in the kingdom of heaven. But because you have been hidden in Christ Jesus, because he has his strong arm around you, because you are nestled in his bosom, so to speak, those things will never keep you from the Father's love and from the place that Christ prepares for you. You're hidden in Christ Jesus. You are not hidden in the things of this world that give no hope, and cannot sustain, and cannot endure. Your Redeemer lives. What a powerful Easter message Colossians 3, 1 through 4 is. And we need to live as those resurrection people, reminding ourselves all the time of what God accomplished for you and for me in Christ Jesus. That's what it means to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. We talked about it a little bit earlier with philosophies and traditions. Those are all things that are entombing kind of things. We can spend our life trying to make sense of it by living according to the earthly elemental things of the world. It will never give the firm foundation. On the other hand, setting our minds on things above isn't some exercise of meditation. It's a very tangible exercise of being hidden in Christ where he says he can be found. Where is Jesus found? In every word on every page of scripture. Where is Jesus found? In the promise of your baptism. Where is Jesus found? In the body and blood that is given to you in the Lord's Supper for the forgiveness of sins and sustaining hope of life everlasting. How do you set your mind on things above? By letting Jesus fully tend to you, wrap you in his arms, and feed you in his word and in his sacrament. It's not some philosophical move. It is the way God delivers resurrection hope to his people who live in Christ and one day will live forever in his presence guaranteed because of the death and resurrection of our Savior. Amen. Now the peace that far surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This time we have the opportunity as brothers and sisters in Christ to confess our faith. I invite you to stand as we speak the creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to receive our tithes and offerings, these words from 1 Peter, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I invite you to be seated as we receive our tithes and our offerings.
invite you to stand for prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as I live my new life in you, keep my life focused on following you. Bless our tithes and offerings to lead others to be raised by faith and from death to life, loving and serving with the gifts you give. Amen. And we bring the prayers of God's people before his throne of grace. We go to prayer. Heavenly Father, grant healing, strength, and patience to Ashlyn and Bill Jerishin, Carol Rathjen, and Pastor Peter Kelm, who recover from surgery or undergo therapies and treatments. Be with Karen Isaacson and Monica Ashery, who will be undergoing kidney donor transplant surgeries. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Risen Christ, bring resurrection hope to those who mourn the death of loved ones. Provide comfort to the family of Bob Brandt, who was called to his rest this past week. Hold his family in your strong arms as they anticipate the day of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, our nation is in crisis. We face threats from without and from within. Bring peace through your church to our communities. Help us to lead the way in defending the helpless and feeding the hungry, speaking for the voiceless. Give us courage to stand against injustice in all its forms. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty Father, protect those who protect us. We join in prayer with Christians around our country to intercede for families and officers of our police departments who face daily threat. Protect all officers, firefighters, and soldiers as they carry out their duties and service to our communities and our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Your Spirit of God, give wisdom and discernment to those who serve in your church. Be with Alex Schwann and Lisa Roberts as they prepare to join our Emmanuel family in ministry this coming school year. Bless Heather Korn, who has accepted her call to serve at Elm Grove Lutheran School, and with me and my family as we go to our Redeemer in Wauwatosa. Be with our missionaries as they share Christ in foreign lands. Salam and Georgina Ayagri, David and Valerie Federwitz, Phil and Jamie Eggold. And be with our mission partners in the Lutheran Church in Uganda. Prosper their work for the sake of salvation, Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for Christian marriage. Be with Kyle Schmelzer and Stephanie Uden as they begin their life as husband and wife. And we thank you for the gift of citizenship in Christ's kingdom through baptism. May your spirit tend to Nicholas Ford throughout his earthly walk, fixing his eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of his faith. And we thank you for the birth of Isaiah to Kelsey and Kyle Barth. Continue to shower that family with love and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of Emmanuel and the people you have gathered together to share life in this place. We ask your continued blessings on Matthew Hamas, Ken, Dana, Charlotte, Chloe, and Ruby Hanrahan. John and Debbie Hanschke, who are thankful to you for blessing their years of marriage, their three children, daughter-in-law and son-in-law and grandson. Provide their children with wisdom and discernment as they navigate your will in their lives. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for Connie Hansen and Alan, Karen, and Michelle Herrer. Provide their households with peace, especially the lasting peace of a home built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go with these words from Romans. Now to him who is able to establish us in accordance with the gospel. The message we proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past. Now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith to the only wise God, be glory forever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. So may God fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Amen.